Like, you know, I, I, I called this the breakthrough podcast because it's not just real estate, right? Like, I want to know more about people because when I talk to buyers, and I think for like you guys as well, when you're on the phones, people forget that we're, we're just humans just like they, they are. are, right? Like a lot of times I try to overcome the banker persona. That's why I don't do the suits and ties because I try to relate to them on a personal level and just be like, I'm one of you. I'm not the, I'm not the bank. I'm not Chase. Mm -hmm. So like for you, like what, what was the reason that you broke out of the traditional life and decided to come into real estate? Well, for me, I mean, I guess it was kind of blessing in disguise. Uh, I was in the healthcare field for over 17 years, working at Scripps uh, down in San Diego. Moved up to Temecula, got a job at the local hospital. I was there for less than a year when COVID hit. Um, I was put on leave. And since I was there for less than a year, you know, I didn't, I didn't get those benefits. So I had to do something to provide for my family. So, you know, partnered up with James and told me to get my real estate license and just started grinding from then. Got my license in 2020, summer 2020, and I've just been grinding since then. Yeah. So, but I mean, when I was at the hospital, I was on call pretty much 22 days every six weeks minimum, 24 hour call. If I get paid, I have to be in the hospital within 30 minutes. Having two little girls, it was hard. How old are you your know? girls? My girls are five and eight. Let's go. You know, I was always on call every weekend, and they're like, Daddy, can we go to SeaWorld? Sorry, baby, I can't. I'm on call. Oh, Daddy, can we go eat here? Yeah, I have to drive separate. If I get paid, I have to leave. You know? And I'd be working 12-hour days, come home. They'd be sleeping. I'd leave before they wake up, and I wouldn't see them for two to three days. I'd see them sleeping, but, you know... I just wasn't there. I, I didn't feel like I was a father. I just felt like I was a provider, you know, but now, now things have changed and it's all daddy daycare now, you know, I wake up, get them fed, do their hair, drop them off, pick them up, take them to the softball practice, take them to the parks and I wouldn't change it for the world. The balls it must've took for you to say, I'm going to leave a secure <laughs> paycheck. Yes. Every, every two, two weeks. weeks, getting a nice check stable could find a job anywhere and saying fuck it follow your dream yeah and it's what i'm doing you know i left a six-figure job but hey i'm making more you know yeah so well and then you got the tax benefits right so oh like, yeah started a business no you drive a mercedes so you must be doing all right well it's the car that i always wanted i need a big boy car so dude your mercedes gives massages yeah that's insanity <laughs> That's awesome, man. I mean, you know, it's you hear a lot of people say, I want to get into this industry or I want to do what you guys do. I, I get at least once a week someone calling me saying, hey, how do I become a lender? How to become a real estate agent? Someone in my sphere is always looking, right, taking a class. And it's like, you know, are you willing to do and are you willing to take the risks? Because the rewards are, can be great, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, it's it's the risk of. What are you willing to give up and what are you willing to sacrifice? Yeah. But the intangibles, right? The time, the time that you're going to get now with your girls. Yeah. Like, and those, see, here's the thing. Money you can always make. But that yeah. time with your girls. Yeah. Like, I just, I just had this realization, like, my daughter's in Canada, right? And so I'm missing her growing up yeah. and I'm, I'm missing her milestones as she goes through life. Yeah. And I was like, well, why the fuck am I stressed out over it? Like, I can just go see her, mm -hmm. you know? And I <clears throat> I switched my mindset to, because I would always say, well, I don't have time. I got to work. I got to do this. I got to, and I was like, fuck that. There's no financial transaction in this universe that's worth more than my time with her. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I booked the ticket. I paid double the price. But I was like, I want to go see her. Yeah. So fuck it. Tomorrow at 8 a.m., I'm on a flight to Canada. I'll spend five days with her. Come on back. And smash. Yep. Right. And while I'm up there, like you still work. I mean, I can, but I'm but, gonna I'm gonna be present with her, right? Yeah. And that's like where this industry is so amazing because it gives you that ability, but it's earned. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not given. Yeah. Like I also hustle all the fucking time. Right. Like 
you don't sleep without thinking about how you're going to make your next paycheck, how you're going to get your next client. It never ends. Yeah. Where do you see this, this market going over the next six months? You know, it's starting to correct itself. It's a, it's a shift, but it's a correction. Um, it's what the market needed. So I feel it's going to level out, stabilize. What are some of the strategies that you use in order to be able to get new clients? Well, when you're doing listings, you know, list at the lower end of the, the spectrum, track those buyers and, you know, market right, you'll, you'll still get above asking. But, and also just having, you know, strong partnerships, strong business partners, like with a lender, having the lender right, reach out to the agent, tell them how strong of a client the buyers are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, having people on your team that think outside the box and help you come up with different strategies. Every deal is different, you know, so you always got to think outside the box. If you were starting right now, if you were on day one, what is like the first thing you would do in order to be able to create business? I'll get on those phones, phones and call. Um, you just got to be out there. You got to be social. Who are you calling? Just leads that are looking to buy. Um, right now, I'm circle dialing homes that in neighborhoods where I've sold houses. Um, just letting them know, hey, you know, this house sold for this this much. Have you considered uh, selling your home? That's yeah. got to be brutal. It is. That's got to be brutal on your it soul. Is. <laughs> it is. But you got to do what you got to do. You know, you're not going to get business unless you ask for it. Yeah. You know, um, you just got to be social. Talk to everybody that you, you come across and meet. You, you're at the gas station, supermarket, wherever, at the park. Dude, I got a, I got a client at a, <clears throat> when I was checking out at Best Buy. This When I, when I want to go buy this TV with James, our videographer, I was checking out. I forgot how we brought it up, but then the cashier was like, oh, what do you what do? you do?" And I was like, oh, I'm a mortgage banker. And he goes, oh, for real? And he brought up that he's a vet. And I was like, well, why don't you own a house? And so we're working on get, trying to get him pre-approved right now. Nice. But, uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's anywhere, man. Like, you can, yeah. like, right now, my sphere is killing it. Like, <clears throat> I used to do these big pay-to-plays with these agents. And, like, you know, I started getting real fucked over by a lot of real estate agents. And I was like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to cut a bunch of them out of my Rolodex. And I'm only going to focus on our our internal team, the guys who have been loyal to me, and then really focus on my sphere. And, like, my sphere has been killing it. But I've been on the phones grinding, bro, six, you know, five, six hours a day. And I'm if I'm not on the phone, I'm texting. So, yeah. I mean, it just goes back to the very basics. Like, how many phone calls can you make? Yeah. You know, you make enough phone calls, you're going to break through. So that's, you know, making six figures, making a million. It just comes down to one thing. How many people can you communicate with? Yeah. All right, bro. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you doing this. <clears throat> if you want to get a hold of you, what's what's the easiest way? Give me a call. 858-603-0859. Give me an email, jeff at anchoruphomes.com. Tony Palio, it's Breakthrough Podcast. Peace. Peace.